All praise and glory be to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, creator, nourisher, sustainer, provider, protector and control of every single thing it is. Peace and salvation be upon our beloved master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on his family members, companions, on every single Muslim brothers and sisters who followed and is following and will follow the sunnah of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the day of Qiyamah. My respected brothers and elders and my dear young friends, as human beings, we all are faced with different challenges daily, weekly and right through in our life. Family life, we come out to the society, we have different challenges. When it comes to our corporate life, we have different challenges. As young Boys and girls and in school we have different challenges. When we reach our old age, we have different challenges. Challenges never end. Keep conditions keep changing. But as human beings, in all those conditions, we should know what is the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today I would like to discuss with you a very common and very simple thing that day to day, every day we face with this challenge. Every day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us with this challenge. We are living in an era where the information reaches us so quick. Whatever happens in the world, it can be a person's private life, it can be anything. The media and the access to get information is so widely available, we can access information as soon as possible. Quran speaks and it gives us guidance. As human beings, when we get to know something, when some information reaches you, you see something and you witness something, how does a believer who has faith in Allah, who has faith in hereafter, akhirah, that I am responsible for every action, how should he or she respond? How should we answer? Generally what happens, uh, we think we are used to this, this is our culture. When some message reaches us, sometimes that message will say Alhamdulillah. These are certain vocabularies that every Muslim we use day to day in our life. Alhamdulillah, MashaAllah, SubhanAllah, al Billah, Astaghfirullah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Don't we use that? Any good message reaches you, we say Alhamdulillah. Something amazes you, something very beautiful. You're seeing a goodness of someone. Immediately, we as believers, we must respond, MashaAllah, all this has occurred with the Qadr of Allah subhanahu we say, SubhanAllah. Glory and may Allah be, Allah is purified, Allah is subhan, glory be to Him. And we are grateful to Him, Alhamdulillah. Oh, some bad message reaches us. Something has happened very bad. What do we say? Either we say, Astaghfirullah or Al-Iyadu Billah. Al-Iyadu Billah means may Allah protect us from the harm or calamity. Oh, a message of Janazah reaches us when we say, someone has passed away, we say, Inna Lillahi wa Inna Ilayhi Raj. My respect, sir, brothers, whatever we see, if it's a negative or positive, that we do have a vocabulary in our dictionary which connects ourselves with Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which will keep reminding all these are happening biqadrihi. With the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It can be something bad or good. So we say saying that. Alhamdulillah, al-iyadu billah, subhanallah, masha'allah. These are the words that we use. But my respected brothers, these are just has become just a lip service. It is just, we don't really connect those words with our mind and heart. When we attribute, when we say it's Masha Allah, we don't really attribute the greatness to Allah. 
from our mind and heart. Then we say, Subhanallah, we don't really attribute that greatness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just it is a lip service, we're saying just Subhanallah. Or we say, Alhamdulillah, we are not attributing, we are not really grateful in our mind and heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we say, Inna lillah, it is just the, uh, you know, the typing, our fingers does the work or our lips service. Inna lillah. Do we really mean that? Do we connect inna lillah? Nothing belongs to me. Everything belongs to Allah. Including my life, myself. Everything belongs to Allah. Do we do that? My respected brothers, now I am coming to connect this with our uh, interaction and relationship with social media and digital media. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very clearly, beautifully explains and guides the believers in Surah An-Nur. In Surah An-Nur. An information reaches you, a message reaches you, which is a bad behavior or a mistake or shortcomings or something which you dislike has occurred to a brother or a sister. How you as a believer should respond to it? My respected brother, this is something very important. Our deen, our religion is not only about prayers. Our religion is not only about charity. Our religion is not only about speaking about akhirah and all that. Our religion should have an impact in our behavior, in our ethics, our values. It should have an impact. You need to fear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah An-Nur, اِتَّلَقَوْنَهُ بِأَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَتَقُولُونَ بِأَفْوَاهِكُمْ مَا لَيْسَ لَكُمْ بِهِ عِلْمٍ وَتَحْسَبُونَهُ أَيِّنَا وَهُوَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَظِيمٌ What happens sometimes without realizing, you think, ah, it's really just simple. When you type some message in WhatsApp, you say, oh, it's not a great deal. When you criticize a brother or sister, you say, it's not a great deal, I'm just expressing my view. When you share information which has reached to you, you say it's not a great deal, it's just I'm sharing the information. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَحْسَبُونَهُ هَيِّنَا You think it is something simple and not a great deal? But Allah says, وَهُوَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَظِيمٌ By Allah, definitely honor of a believer, honor of a human being is great. Our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam emphasized that on, in the month of Zil Hijjah, day of Arafah, in Haram, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the honor of a believer, honor of a human being is greater than the honor of the Ka'batullah. Greater, it is so sacred than the day of Arafah. It is sacred than the month of Zil Hijjah. It is sacred than the plain of Arafah and Haram. My dear Spectre brothers, when it comes to our exchanging our views in social media, comments, we spend a lot of time in that. Commenting about others, it's very unfortunate and it is an Eastern culture and Eastern mentality that we worried about others more than we are worried about ourselves. I'm thinking this, is, uh, this has been our tradition. May Allah protect us. The entire eastern region, if you take India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, in all these, people are worried about the neighbors and themselves. We are worried about others, we are not worried about ourselves. My respected brothers and elders in Islam, a person has committed a sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah An-Nur, both the dimensions. We are, there is a rumor about beloved wife of our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Aisha radiallahu alayhi Who invented it, who fabricated it, is a hypocrite, a munafiq. But who got caught in that web is believers. One person fabricated it, those who shared, many, majority of them were believers. Amongst them, there was a Sahabi known as Mistah radiallahu an, who is a very close relative of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an. Sometimes, 
family members hurt us more than anyone else. Own brothers and sisters and cousins, they will do certain mistakes which will hurt us very badly. But we have no option, we have to forgive them and live with them. This Mr. Radiallah and he was living under the sponsorship of Abu Bakr Siddiq Radiallah. Under the sponsorship. Surah Al Nur explains this. It is a huge allegation, slander against Aisha Radiallah. And Mr. is a very good person. He is a believer who migrated from Makkah to Medina. That I means he sacrificed to the religion. This what he said. As human beings, sometimes we may get caught into these things. A mistake might happen. We have to be very careful in sharing message, in commenting on something which we do not have knowledge about it. We are looking at only in one dimension. Our knowledge is very big. And my respected brothers, whenever an information reaches you, always empathize that. When you get to know so and so have done something, maybe it is true or maybe it is a false allegation. But immediately, may Allah grant me and you this ability, immediately I, am, I believe this character of you, this akhlaq of you will take you to Jannah and Allah will be pleased with you more than your prayer and charity. Remember, He will forgive you. And he will conceal all your shortcomings that elevate you because that you are very kind and empathizing with other fellow human beings. Just put yourself there. It can happen to you. You can do something wrong. But how would you love if a mistake has happened from you, the community and family to respond to you? How would you love them to treat you in back. Some might get angry and come to you, scold at you, shout at you. But then what? How do you learn? What do you expect? This is the basic guidance of our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What you love for yourself, love for your fellow brother. Your iman and faith will not be completed without that. My respected brothers, it is very, very unfortunate since now we are so technolog technologically advanced we have this means of communicating and expressing our view we have lost the basic human ethics and values when it comes to exchanging our views and opinions we have to be as human we have to be very respectful when we are exchanging our views when you commenting be very Respectful. Hadith says, When you look at it, give 70, more than 70 times if you can give him excuse. That would have been this way, that would have been this way. You give excuse to yourself and try to tell good about him to your mind and heart, not about others. More than 70 times. And then the scholar says, after you have given 70 excuses, still your mind says, no, it cannot be, none of these excuses are valid. Then you should say in the end, there might be another reason which I am not aware of. It. After 70 times, my respected brothers, this is a basic fact. You know, the world speaks about privacy law, stress passing. You know, in the court, a person, if you go even to any court, a person can go and file a case for defamation. That means it can be true or false. I can be a person who has committed a mistake. It doesn't give you right to tarnish and destroy my name unethically in different platforms. It doesn't give you. Religiously, it doesn't give you. And even by law, it does not give you that. It is the responsibility of the court. It is the responsibility of the state to punish you if you have done something and violated the right of someone. It doesn't give you the right 
to spread the message and fabricate it and add more stories and go on, you end up in trouble. He can sue you. I respect your brothers. Leave aside, maybe nobody is going to do it in this world. There is a court of Allah in their qiyamah. There is a court of Allah in their qiyamah. In every salah we are saying, Maliki yawmi deen. Allah is the owner of day of judgment. Every salah, 17 times, we keep reminding there is a day of judgment. There is a day of judgment that Allah will judge each and every one of us. So we have to be very careful in judging others in this year. We are sinners. They always say, every sinner has a future, every saint has a past. You go through the history, there are huge saints. If you look at their past, they have been the worst people. Every sinner has a future. Every saint has a past. Nobody is perfect, my dear brother. We are human beings. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is keep reminding about istighfar and he says Allah is merciful and he is ready to forgive. He is ready to forgive. My respected brothers, when, when we comment and express our view, let us, our jealousy or our competition with the other person should not come in across. We have to be very honest. We have to be very honest. Community, my respected brothers, in order to achieve the help of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to be respecting one another and loving one another. If we keep destroying ourselves, I spoke about Aisha radiallahu anh and Mr. radiallahu anh. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not mention the great mistake which was done by Mr. radiallahu anh Quran. Allah says, forgive him. Allah mentioned his righteousness. Allah mentioned his goodness. He says he has believed, he has iman, and he has migrated, he has done hijrah, and he's miskin, poor man. So Abu Bakr, please forgive him. This is what Allah said. Allah doesn't say a one who is part of the accusation, who spread the message of the slander, no. He could have mentioned that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not mention. I respect him. This is the ethic of sharing, whatever it is. When it comes, when it reaches you, you need to ask yourself before forwarding that, before sharing it, before, you know, putting on your comment. You ask yourself, you ask yourself, what is the impact is going to be there? Why am I commenting? Why am I doing this? Is it because of my anger? It is because of the ego. It is because of the jealousy. Why am I doing it? Why am I commenting it? In certain instances, our deen, sharia has given us permissibility to share the shortcoming of a person. When someone is proposing, and then they come and ask you, I am proposing my daughter for so and so, or someone is saying, I am proposing my son, so and so. Oh, this person is coming and asking. Then you know the shortcomings <laughs> and whatever defects you know. You think that it will harm the marriage. They will not do sincerely. You must say that. You must say, okay. It's good, brother, you know. And it has to be not just rumors. It has to be something which is really proven. Even at that time, rumors cannot be said. It is proven. This is the beauty for the religion which protects the dignity and the value of a human being. However, every word in their qiyama, Allah says that there is mizan. Allah is going to weigh our good deeds. You know why? Sometimes it's just one word, but the weight of that word, the hurt and the impact of that word is so great. So you can end up in the wrong side. May Allah forgive you. Once Aisha radiallahu anha, because Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the later part of his life, he had many wives. Aisha radiallahu anha, as human, you know what I'm saying? Everybody is human, don't forget that. She mentioned a negative word about another wife, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just a negative word. You know what our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said? Ya Aisha, 
of your life. If you take that word and put it to the ocean, ocean will start speaking. So bad. What a huge ocean. Bring the words. Saying now, nowadays I think our young boys, they don't say it, they just type it. Nobody's saying now, no, no words have been said, you know. No lip service, it's only our fingers are working. But those, every comment that we do, we have to be very careful. It can destroy a nation, it can destroy a family, it can destroy a person's entire career and life, it can destroy Unrespectable. Our comment should be something benefiting. It should be uplifting. It should be something positive. It should, yes, someone has done it. Okay, how we look at it? How can we protect that person, not rejecting anyone? How can we reform him and make him a better person? Ikrima of Allah an. Abu Jahl's son, Ikrima. He has made the Sahaba and Islam in a great impact. How will our Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Ikrima is willing to accept Islam and coming? What did our sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? My respected brothers, this is our deen, this is our religion. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gathered the Sahaba and said, Do not speak bad about Abu Jahl, Ikrima's father, front of you. Don't mention about their past. Don't talk about it. Abu Jahl, even now we're going to do that. We're going to say, La'natullah. Allah is not going to punish us by saying that. Because he has really harmed and destroyed. But what is the ethic that our beloved Rasulullah said? Khalid ibn Walid radiallahu had a very bad past. Seventy shuhadas in battle of Uhad. Khalid radiallahu was the reason for it. But when he come back, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was very optimistic about every individual. Every individual was thinking that this person will benefit. And Khalid the Walid Rabbiyallahu Anhu came. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never mentioned about anything about Khalid Rabbiyallahu Anhu's past. But it is upon us. If I have a bad past, I should remember every time that and it should be a mode of encouragement for me to do good. Khalid radiallahu anhu used to keep remembering about his past and he used to do more good good. Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. Abu Sufyan, Allahu Akbar, once in the gathering of sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Umar radiallahu anhu's gathering, actually in Umar radiallahu anhu's gathering, slaves, Africans, they were all prominent members in the gathering of Umar radiallahu anhu. All the leaders of Quraysh who were having, you know, tribal, they were leaders in their tribe, they had prominent figures who were really behind. Then Suhail and these prominent figures in Quraysh at the back, they were talking about it. See what has happened, what Omar have done. He has given preference for the slaves. In return, Abu Sufyan was telling that we cannot blame Omar for it, we have to blame ourselves. These people have sacrificed so much for this cause, so much for the humanity, so much for this being. They deserve to be in front. They deserve to be in front of. We delayed. Allah gave us that opportunity. We delayed to accept it. So this is our faith. We cannot blame it. My respected brothers, it's something very, very important at this time and in this junction. As Sri Lankan Muslims, we are living here, we may have difference of opinion. We are divided and we are having envy and anger and jealous about based on our business, based on family affairs, based on our religious differences. We have all this. That should not lead you to pass the line when we come into exchanging your views. My respect your brothers and don't think this is great sin than committing zina, great sin than any other sin. Because all other sins, it is between you and Allah, you can directly ask forgiveness and God. Once you have mentioned something in the comments, in the media, in social media, in public and it goes viral, you cannot take it back. 
you may do tawba. You may again put another good comment. Maybe the first comment because normally the negative reaches very far. It goes high reach. The positive doesn't reach. It doesn't go very far. So my respected brothers, we must try to understand when we are engaged in our social media platforms, when we are engaged with one another, we must try to see when the information reaches you, under which category does it fall? Does it come under the category of Alhamdulillah, Masha Allah, Subhanallah, or al Billah? May Allah protect us. Astaghfirullah al Billah. I seek forgiveness from Allah. I am seeking protection from Allah. Something can happen in it immediately because without the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you cannot be successful in this world and hereafter. For you to be, you know, be safeguarded from sin or any disobedience, it is a rahmah. Yusuf alayhi salam said, Hada rahmatun lirrabbi. It is the rahmah from my Allah. وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارُكُمْ بِسُوءِ إِلَّا مَا رَحْمَ رَحْمَ Yusuf alayhi salam, when he safeguarded himself from disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from adultery, people start praising, you know, you're such a great man, you're an angel, you know, how did you do? Yusuf alayhi salam said, there is no greatness of me, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي My nafs, I cannot free my nafs from desire. I'm a human. My nafsis keep on saying, do that, do that. It is attracting, it is inviting. Illa ma rahma rabbi. I was able to prevent myself, protect myself because of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My respected brothers, we need to have this approach when we are specially engaging with our young people. Engaging with our young people. All of us, now we have reached 40s and 50s, we forget about our teenage, we forgot about our young period when we engage with our youngsters. Youngsters, they will do mistakes. But you should know how to accept them, how to embrace them, how to guide them, how to rectify their mistakes. You cannot do that. I keep reminding everyone, in one of the janazas, father has passed away, son is crying. He's crying so much. It was something extraordinary and different. After three days I called the son and I asked him, What makes you so sad? Is there anything special that you miss about your father? <laughs> remember my respected brothers, as parents, as individual people will not remember about our beauty, our power, our wealth, no. They will remember our character. They will remember the personal touch that you have with every individual. His son, father, has so much good for this man. You know what is this man? He said, once I was doing something very bad, an act of haram, a disobedience, father caught me. It's my young days. I am the elders in the family. Now I'm scared. Can't go home back. Maybe father is going to laugh me in front of my brothers and sisters, in front of my mother, all this. But I got late, went home, didn't eat, slept. First day passed, second day passed. One week passed, my father never spoke or mentioned about it at all. After one week, privately he called me. And he hugged me. He cried. And he said, for this one week, I was asking Allah forgiveness, because you are my son. If you are doing something bad, something wrong with me. And he said, this mistake is between you and me and Allah. I am not going to expose this, because if I do that, your brothers and sisters will always have in their mind, my brother is someone who has done this. I honor you. Your respect is very important. Your dignity is very important. So, respect yourself. 
When you're doing something wrong, remember that is you're not respecting yourself. Respect yourself. The son said, that is the last day. From that day I made Tawbah. It changed my entire life. Every moment I think about my father, I think how he handled me when I did this mistake. My dear spectral brother, you can get angry, emotion, problem will not solve. You must understand what am I trying to achieve by this? You need to love everyone. They are human. I am standing here today. I am standing here. I am not an angel. Your imam is not an angel. Your father is everybody. We are human. We all, we can do mistakes. May Allah protect us. Allah's protection is needed. But how do you approach it? How do you rectify it? How do you share this message? It's very important. We have lost this. Everyone's privacy. This speaks about the privacy law. Islam speaks first about privacy. In Quran, Allah mentioned about the privacy. Privacy is very important. A person's information is his right. His secrets are his right. It is only Allah. Allah does not give you the right to expose that. Every human being's honor and dignity is Allah's right. It is not our right. So my respected brothers, we are living in a time and era in this social media. It is not easy. We are tempted. Shaitan will keep doing it. Remember. Don't let go. Your son might do a mistake. Your brother might do a mistake. Your wife or husband might do a mistake. Don't ever let them go. Always embrace them. Nobody's perfect. Always embrace them. Forgive them. Try to see how you can rectify those. It's very important surrounding. As Muslim community, we are all brothers. We are, you know, we are one. And as Sri Lankans, we are one, we do have shortcomings, we must try to understand, try to forgive, and we try to rectify it. Yes, there are certain mistakes which destroy and harm, or there is proper method how you address them. How do you address those? Yes, you cannot certain things if someone is abusing you, or someone has been abused, someone has been oppressed. Yes, there is way to approach those things, to address those things. And to get the culprit and punish the face. But it does not give you why you are sharing this information in social media. Culprit is not getting punished. But you need to address it. My respected brothers, let us think and let us behave like most honorable human beings. Let us behave with dignity when we are sharing information and talking and exchanging our views. This is the guidance of our beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this is the challenge that we are facing at this time and era. So, my respected brothers and elders in Islam, do not destroy. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. Finally, I'm going to conclude with this. Said there is a deed called al halika which will shave and destroy all your good deeds. In day of Qiyamah, a person comes, he will be known as a bankrupt muflis. Halika. I've done so much of good deeds. You come and stand in their Qiyamah, nothing is to be found. You know what will happen. He says, you did good deeds in return. You, you know, spoke bad about so and so. You commented about so and so. You shared so much of information without verifying it. All your deeds have been washed out. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And my respect to brother, remember one thing. Finally, if you disgrace a brother or sister, Allah will disgrace you. If you honor and conceal the mistake of our brother and sister, Allah will honor you and Allah will conceal your mistake. This is Allah's wahda. Because this, my dear respected brother, this is how we need to interact and behave and try to understand how we're going to go forward. These are the very important ethics and values in the community. It's very sad when you look at the state. Sometimes I'm very worried we are speaking so much about religion. Our religiosity is somewhere else. Our ethics and behavior somewhere else. Religiosity means our akhlaq and ethics and values. It is not about the number of prayers that you do, the dress that you wear, 
it is not your appearance, it is your behavior. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant me and you the understanding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us in every injunction and challenges when we face that we need to do it in the right way, that Allah is pleased and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rasul is pleased and Allah will be accepted and those way that Allah will love us and Allah's mercy will be upon us. وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين